Today we're looking at exams and how to revise. You're watching this because you've got some exams coming up and you want to know what to do so that you can perform your best in those exams. A good place to start is to make sure that you're in the right place mentally. Exams are a part of life. They are something which most people have to go through. And if you can accept that right from the outset, that will help you. So let's go into some more detail about what we do to get ourselves started and what we do in order to cover the work that we're going to need for the exam itself. So how to start? Well, a good way to start is first of all to ditch the word revision because it has negative connotations. We often feel that we're overwhelmed by a lot of really rather boring work. Much better instead to use these terms. Review. Fix. Following, follow these rules to fix in your mind the information you need to know. Review the work that you have done in your courses throughout the two years first. Review again after 10 minutes. Review again after one day. And review again after one week. Get yourself organised. Reviewing takes time, so plan it carefully. Try to remember there are no shortcuts. Review a lot now and you could easily go up a grade. Do not do know exactly how much time is available to you over the Easter break and fill in your reviewing plan accordingly. Do not delude yourself that you have done more revision or reviewing than you have. So, plan your time. Do build in a safety net for illness or finding something more difficult than you expected. Do not make the classic error of prioritising early exams thinking that you'll have more time for later ones. Do keep testing yourself to prove that you do actually know your stuff. And do spread yourself evenly across the day. And remember to take breaks. Do not make the mistake, however, of prioritising breaks over work. Where to revise? You need to create a learning environment. This is a good learning environment. And it's probably where most people will choose to do their revision. Not this though. This is far too chaotic. You can't possibly prepare clearly in an environment like this. You should have a tidy room, something that feels calm and ordered. However, don't make tidying the room an excuse for not doing the work. Also, how you revise in that room? Be comfortable, but not sprawled across your bed. Be warm, but not so warm that you're sleepy. Be away from any distractions. Be well lit. And have fixed start and end times, and stick to them. Now, so you've planned your time and you've found a good place in which to revise, now you have to think about what you have to do. Well, you should begin with your exam papers, units, the mark schemes and the syllabus. You must know them intimately. You have to know what the examiner expects you to know by the end of the course and use that to structure your revision. Divide your reviewing up by topics 
based on their requirements. So, do not just say English on your reviewing plan. Say wealth, society and marriage. In this way, your reviewing will be much more specific and much more targeted regarding what the exam requirements are going to be. Be purposeful. Say to yourself, if I am asked this in the exam, what exactly am I going to say? Have a tick list to show your progress. It will motivate you enormously if you really think that you are making headway with your revision. It might sound an odd term to use, but try to be professional in your approach to your studies. Keep a sense of purpose. Bread now, jam later. Yes, you've got to work hard now, but it will be so worth it when those results come out. Have a clear overview of what you need to know. Also, know yourself well. Know if you are an early bird or a night owl and work accordingly. Most importantly, know your learning style and work with it. So, ask yourself. What do I already know? Some of it you will already know quite well. Importantly though, what do I not know? And if I don't know it, how much time do I need to learn it? Then, you should plan your reviewing time, review, and fix that information accordingly. Have an aim for each review session. By the end of this session, I will know. And then self-test by explaining it to someone. Research has shown us that by far the most effective way of testing whether we truly know something is to explain it to someone. Doesn't matter who, but do try and explain it to someone. So know your learning style. You will have traits of all three learning styles, but most of us learn lean towards one style more strongly than the others. So you will be a visual learner, an auditory learner, or a kinesthetic learner. These reviewing techniques tend to suit these learners. If you are a visual learner, you will respond particularly well to maps, diagrams and charts. Posters, spider diagrams will help you to fix the information that you need. Highlighting and colour coding will also help you in organising your work. You will respond very well to mnemonics. This is a mnemonic that I learned when I was at school a long time ago, but I still remember that RELRING for biology means respiration, excretion, locomotion, reproduction, irritability, nutrition and growth. There's no way I would have remembered that all these years later had it not been for that mnemonic. So mnemonics work. You will also respond well to rewriting your notes drawing pictures, making sketches, which will somehow associate ideas. You will particularly respond well to post-it notes arranged in patterns. You will also do very well if you watch informative videos on the internet and YouTube is a very useful resource in this area. If you are an auditory learner, in other words you prefer listening, these are techniques which will help you. Read your notes aloud. Record yourself and listen back to what you have said. Again, the internet is a good resource for you. 
You can sing. Don't be too embarrassed by that. Make a rhyme. Pace around the room with a pronounced rhythm. Walk and talk. Mnemonics work for you too, but say them aloud. If you are a kinesthetic learner, you are likely to be someone who likes to move. So work with it. Write out your notes. Place post-it notes in patterns around your room and indeed around your house. Move as much as is sensible. Pace, again, in a pronounced rhythm. Walk and talk works for you too. Also, recording yourself, reading your notes will have a positive impact for you. Now these are some specific learning strategies, ways in which you can review your work and fix it in your mind. Walking talk we've just uh, heard about, a timeline, flow chart something very simple, flow chart something much more involved, brainstorming, mind maps, storyboards, something musical, interlocking circles, doodles, colouring, post-its, charting your progress, word games, a clock sequence, annotation, making a bookmark with information on it, and talking it through with someone. Let's have a look at what some of those techniques look like. So, in this method, walking and talking, you use different rooms in the house to represent different aspects of your revision. You learn those ideas as you walk around the, the room or the house. You do it a lot and you will fix those ideas. In annotation, you will have a central picture and around that you will write ideas which you will connect as you go around that picture. We've already referred to mnemonics. The second one down, Richard of York gave battle in vain, is a very popular mnemonic that people uh, have used to remember the colours of the rainbow. Use mnemonics, they work. Make up your own. This is the theme of interlocking circles. So you can place information in each individual circle and link them together to see how they all interact with each other. Grouping your ideas together on different coloured sheets of paper or cards can help you to organise your thoughts and if you respond well to colour you will again associate ideas with that particular colour. In the exam that can be very useful for you. Lots of people use spider diagrams to connect ideas. Again, it's a very visual way of fixing ideas and their relationship with each other. A more complex evolution of that is the mind map. Here is an example of one, but do be very careful that you don't make your mind map too involved so that there's too much information on it for you to absorb. But that connection of ideas is what you're aiming for so that in the exam you have something in your mind that you can follow right through to a really full and sustained answer. This is a very simple flowchart, but it can help you again see how one thing leads to another 
And again, it's fixing those connections. Here is a flowchart which is much more involved, something that you're likely to use if you're studying at advanced level. Making a timeline so that you can see the sequence of events will also help you, particularly if knowing the sequence of events is something that your subject specifically requires, something like history, for example. So we've said a lot about fixing those ideas by association. The idea of learning everything is overwhelming, so don't picture it like that. Divide your learning up. And then find ways to remember topics. Find ways which work for you. So, how is this our one model? And we've already seen that. Another model might be to try to remember a journey that you know particularly well. Think about um, places along that journey and associate them with aspects of a particular subject. Look on the internet. It's full of ideas about how you can find a way of reviewing your work which is going to work for you. However, don't squander time browsing on the internet looking for the perfect solution. You are at the core of your success. However, mix your learning style, uh, your learning methods no one is 100% one learning style. Mixing prevents boredom and it can underpin other learning. And in all cases, test yourself frequently. That is the only way you will know whether or not you know your material. Now you have to recognise that getting started is actually the worst part of it. It's probably a good idea not to plan grand show-off sessions which you know you won't complete. I'm off to my bedroom for the next six hours to do some revision. You're just not going to really be able to see that one through. It's probably better to start with ten minutes and then take a 10 minute break and then work for another 10 minutes. You can't keep that up. You must increase your work time. Increase it to 20 minutes, then 30 minutes, then 40 minutes. But obviously, keep the breaks to 10 minutes. When working, work. When relaxing, relax. Staring into space won't work. But you know what? The 10 minute rule will. Now it's important that you have the right equipment. Paper, pens, post-its, cards. But do not use producing pretty cards as a displacement activity for getting down to memorising what it is you really need to know. Remember again, learn, test, learn, test, learn, test. It's very repetitive, but it works. And that works too. Reward yourself. No adult is going to say to you that revision is fun. We've all done it. We know what it's like. So do build in your rewards. But again, make sure that you have really earned that reward. Now we're nearly at the end of this video, but before we go, try to remember these things. Absolutely. No computer, Facebook, no messaging, nothing. You should devote your concentration 100% to the work that you are covering. Don't have your mobile phone there. It is a distraction and you will give in to temptation. There should be no television on in the room with you. And double, absolutely, 
no music. Students often say the music helps them to concentrate. I would put it to you, in the exam there will be no music. So what is it in the exam which is going to help you concentrate? Learn to work in concentrated periods with no distractions. That is what you will be required to do in the exam. Also, I'd just like to point out the pitfalls of this approach. Beware of the we're revising together myth, when in fact you're actually all getting together and whinging about how much work you have to do and life is unfair and your teachers and your parents don't understand what it's like for you and they're all so old, what do they know about being young and it's all pointless anyway. You just drag each other down and in the time that you're whinging, actually, you could have been doing some work which might actually make a difference to your outcomes. Remember, embrace your nerves. They show you care and they'll actually sharpen you up. However, don't increase your nerves by leaving everything until the last minute. Be confident. You will be confident if you know you have prepared well for the exams. Keep calm and concentrate. Finally, recognise the difference between pressure which is what you will be under, that can be quite stimulating. But know that it's different from stress, which is quite depressing. And stress is what you will put yourself under if you don't plan your revision carefully and complete it accordingly. Work hard. Make yourself proud of you and your achievements. And remember, my reviewing mantra. A lousy Easter will make for a fantastic summer. <laughs>